Good morning, Valley Gate Church. It's Pastor Daryl here, just excited to be with you and to be able to share God's word. Uh, I'm really excited about this morning and ex- encouraged by what God is going to share with us today. And so before we get started, I want to take this opportunity to greet all of you all who are out there. As you know, last week we called it our roll call, and I want to give you an opportunity to do that once again. So make sure you're ready to chat, and this is our opportunity really to meet and greet. And so I want you to just say hello from wherever you're at. So if you're here and you're in the valley, then you can can tell us you're from the East Valley, if you're Gilbert, if you're Chandler, if you're Mesa, Queen Creek, anywhere around there, just make sure you let everybody say, say hello and make sure you let them know that you're there. If you're in North Phoenix, Central Phoenix or South Phoenix, let us know. Ahwatukee. If you're uh, out in the West Valley as well, please make sure that you let us know. If you're even with us from uh, out of state, uh, last week we had somebody from Missoula, Montana. So if you're out there again, we want to say greetings and thank you so much. But if you're from out of state, please make sure that you say hello as well. We're excited to be here, excited to have this opportunity to spend in God's word and most importantly as well in God's word with you. And so I just want to jump right into this. This is our uh, I Am series and Jesus had seven seven statements that he started out with I am that declared who he was and so these were statements that for many in the Jewish culture were counter uh, intuitive to their thinking and also their religious beliefs so every time he said I am it really pierced something in their heart and so today we are going to continue in the I am series we're going to join together in John chapter 15 we're going to read verses 1 through 17 and we have entitled this message as Jesus said about himself I am the true vine. I want everybody to say true vine. Good. Let's start together in John chapter 15 verses 1 and we'll go to verse 17. Jesus is speaking and he says this, I am the true vine and my father is the gardener or my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me, me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that it may be bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you. As a branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bear much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered and they gather them and they throw them into the fire and they are burned. Verse 7. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. By this, my father is glorified that you bear much fruit. So you will be my disciples. Another version says, showing yourself or proving yourself to be my disciples. As the father loved me, I have also loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love just as I've kept my father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may remain in you and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. You are my friends if you do whatever I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends, For all things that I have heard from my Father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and I appointed you that you should go and bear fruit, and that your fruit should remain, that whatever you ask in the Father's name or in my name, he will, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. These things I commend you, that you love one another. God bless us as we spend time in your word. We thank you because Jesus truly is the true vine. We thank you, God, that if he is the true vine, then there are so many things that we can do. And so we open our hearts to receive afresh from you. God, we pray that you will pour your spirit inside of us and that the byproduct of that is that we will be stronger. We would walk in a greater measure of grace. We would love more. And God, we would bear much fruit. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. And everybody say... Amen. To give you some context about this scripture, once again, uh, this is one of these ones, these I am statements, but that it's much deeper than what we initially think. Here we have three people who are in this story, potentially four. Number one is the gardener. 
As Jesus tells the disciples, he says that my father is the gardener or my father is the vine dresser, which means that God is the one who is in complete control. And here, what God does as the gardener is he makes sure that he checks upon the vine, the branches to see if there's fruit. And when there is fruit, he prunes it. He cleanses it so that it can become stronger, become better, and to bear more fruit. But when there is no fruit, he cuts that branch off and that branch begins to wither. What's very clear is that God has an expectation of the vine and the fruit, of the vine and the branch, and that is to bear fruit. You heard it in the scripture before, you judge a tree by the fruit that it bears. Here God is saying that I am looking at my vine and I am looking at the branches to see if in fact they bear fruit. Jesus says that I am the vine, but he, he, he actually qualifies that because he doesn't just say that he's the vine, he says that I am the true vine. Everyone say true vine. True vine is very important because in the Old Testament, the people in this story who they are speaking to are Jewish people. And Jewish people knew that in the Old Testament, whenever God spoke of the vine, he was talking about the nation of Israel. He had, God himself, had planted his chosen people, Israel, and he had planted them in Canaan. And he wanted them to bear fruit. But unfortunately, for a number of reasons, Israel did not bear fruit. And so now Jesus comes on the scene once again with one of those counterintuitive thoughts and he says this to Jewish people who knew that they were God's vine. He says, I am the true vine. So what Jesus is saying is that I have come and I am coming to bear fruit. You may have tried, but I have come to bear fruit. Now, Jesus says this, his responsibility is simply this. Jesus is the true vine who gives and is the source and the strength of the branches. So the vine gives source and the vine gives strength to the branches. The branches are us. The branches are Jesus' friends and his followers who are connected to him and who are there to bear fruit because of him. They are there to bear fruit because of the vine. So when you put this together, it comes down to this. God the gardener sent Jesus the vine into the world to give we the branches the strength and sustenance needed to produce and to bear fruit. Hear this again. God the gardener sent Jesus the vine into our world to give we the branches the strength and sustenance needed to produce and to bear fruit. When I really qualify this and I bring it all down together, there are two simple statements I want to make sure that you understand. If you leave here with nothing, after we understand that Jesus Christ is the true vine, then what we must understand is that God created us to bear fruit. God created us to bear fruit. The only way that we can bear fruit is to be vitally connected to the vine. The only way that we can truly bear fruit is if we are vitally connected to the vine. So this morning I want to talk to you about three ways in which we are called to bear fruit. Three ways in which we know we are bearing fruit. Number one is this, is we abide in the vine. Verse four through six, abide in the vine. Everybody say, do it for the vine. I don't know if you've ever heard that, but there was, there's, the, actually there's some little social media platform that used to be called Vine and everybody would get on this thing and they would do their dances and all of this. And there was one time you could get, there was one little deal that really caught my heart is there was this little girl and uh, her, her friends and her parents were urging her on to do the little dance and they said, do it for the Vine. And she kept saying, I ain't going to do it. And they say, do it for the vine. She said, I ain't going to do it. And they kept getting inside of it, do it for the vine. She, said, I, I. she started dancing and she started letting it go. And I think this is really what it comes down to for us as well, is we have to, if we're going to abide in the vine, we have to do it for the vine. If we're truly going to abide in the vine, we have to do it for the vine. Everybody say, do it for the vine. See, we have to make sure of that because when Jesus comes and he speaks to his disciples as he's talking to them on this farewell discourse, knowing that he would be uh, persecuted and ultimately killed, he's telling them, abide in me and I in you. He begins to break it down and he helps them understand because a branch cannot bear fruit in and of itself. The only way that the branch can bear fruit is if he abides in the vine. And so he said, you must abide in me because you can't produce fruit on your own. You can try to produce fruit on your own, but you can't produce fruit on your own. And we've all seen people who've tried to do things on their own. They've tried to make things on their own, but it never produces what it's supposed to produce. 
He says, I am the vine and you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him, here's what happens. They bear much fruit, but without me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gather those branches, those withered branches that have been cast out, that have no life in them. They gather them together and they have no use for them but to throw them in the fire. And then they're burned. See, what we're talking about when we say abide is something that's going to be consistent throughout this entire sermon. The Greek word means meno. It means that we must remain, we must stay, we must reside, we must continue, we must continue to live, we must wait for, and we must persist. And so when Jesus is speaking to them and he's telling them, abide in me, and we're telling ourselves we need to do it for the vine, that means that we have to remain and be persistent and be consistent and make sure that we wait on and we live in Christ Jesus because he is our vine. And when we remain, I call it tap in. Everybody say tap in. Because when you remain, you have to remain tapped in. And when you remain tapped in, you will bear fruit. It even goes on to say this, not only will you bear fruit, but you will bear much fruit. See, when we're tapped into Jesus, when we're tapped into the vine, we will bear fruit. Not will you bear fruit, you will bear fruit. But when we're not tapped in, That's why I say do it for the vine because there are going to be so many things that are going to try to pull you away. There are going to be so many things that are going to try to make you not tap in. I call that tap out. There are going to be so many things that are going to make you not want to be connected to Christ. There are going to be so many things that are going to make you feel like you're distant from Christ. It can be your desires that you don't find that God met. It could be your delights that God did answer for you. It could be distractions. I don't know what it is, but there are going to be so many things in this life that are going to cause you to want to tap out. Maybe it's complacency. I've been saved all of my life. I know everything. No, no. The fact that you said that means you're not tapped in. Because when we're tapped in, that means that we're getting not just, we're not just getting strength and substance, but we are getting new strength and we're getting new sustenance because God is doing something inside of us. And so it is our responsibility to make sure that we tap in because when we tap in, as I said, you're going to bear fruit and you're not only going to bear fruit, you're going to bear much fruit. But when you tap out, he says this, you can't bear fruit. As a matter of fact, you can do nothing. And those who tap out, they'll be cast out. You know, I like wrestling. And uh, because, you know, wrestling is real. And uh, and so I love the tag team because you find these people who are in there and they're in that 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 match. And you one time there's somebody just beating on a dude and just beating on them. And you can tell them just losing their strength, losing their strength. And there's somebody over here reaching and they're trying to get this dude to tap out. They're trying to get this dude to tap out because all of his strength is leaving. Everything, all of his vigor, all of his confidence has left him because his enemy is beating on him and beating on him and beating on him. And all he wants to do is he's reaching as hard as he possibly can to tap out. Well, I'm going to tell you, this ain't wrestling. And even though wrestling is real, Jesus is real. And you got to make sure that when the enemy starts beating up on you and you're trying to reach the tap out, don't you tap out. Tap in. Everybody say tap in. Because you have to understand this. God did not create you to tap out. Don't tap out. Tap in. Tap into him. Tap into his word. Tap into his grace. Tap into his strength. Tap in. And then you have to make sure that you stay in. So you have to tap in. You have to stay tapped in and don't get cut off. You have to tap in. You have to stay tapped in and don't get cut off. Because it's easy for us to tap in once for a little bit. But Jesus said, remain. He didn't say tap in and tap out. He said, remain. And I believe that if we're going to bear fruit in our life, we're going to bear fruit because we know that God has given us the strength to tap in and to stay tapped in. So that not only will we bear fruit, but we'll bear much fruit. Everybody say, do it for the vine. Point number two. You know that you're bearing fruit when his words abide in you. Let the word work in you. It's when his word abides in you. Listen to what he says in verse 7. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, abide in who? You. If my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. 
By this my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit. Hear it again, that you bear much fruit. So that you will be my disciples or proving yourself to be my disciples. If we reverse engineer this, what he's saying is this, is that one of the proofs of being a disciple of Jesus Christ is that you bear much fruit. See, one of the, one, one of the, one of the byproducts of being a Christian is that we bear fruit. We just don't bag fruit. We just don't gather fruit. We bear fruit. And see, one of the byproducts of being a disciple of Jesus Christ is that you bear much fruit because that brings God glory. But here's what he says. Number one is you got to abide in me. You got to remain in me. But the other thing is this. You have to allow my word to abide in you. And I have to qualify this because a lot of us know the word. A lot of us have heard the word. A lot of us can say the word. But the question is, is does the word live inside of you? See, a lot of us have been around the word. A lot of us have been to church. A lot of us, you know what I'm already going to say. But see, the true question is, is not can you hear the word? It's not do you understand the word? It's not that you can, 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 can make yourself, make the word accessible to you. The question is, does the word work inside of you? See, because when Jesus is saying this, he understands I'm leaving. And I may not be present with you, but I've left a present for you. I've left my word. And if you get this word inside of you, if you allow this word to live inside of you, if you allow this word to percolate inside of you, if you allow this word to penetrate you, if you allow this word to marinate inside of you, then you are going to ask for whatever you desire and it will be done for you. And I love what he says. It's got to line up with the word. A lot of us will ask God to make me YouTube famous. A lot of us will ask God to make me Facebook famous. But why don't you ask God to make you Jesus famous? See, because when the word gets inside of you, now it's not about what other people think about you. It's about what is the word doing inside of you. And when you start talking about what the word is doing in you, then that's when people want to listen. And so God is telling, him, make, t- telling them, make sure you get this word working in you. Make sure you get this word in you. Don't just listen to it. Don't just seek to understand it. You get that word inside of you. Scripture says that the word is living and active. It's sharper than a double-edged sword. And you know what that word is meant to do? To pierce you. Let that word get inside of you. Scripture says that your word is like a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. So that means that that word will give you a sense of direction. Your word is like manna. It falls down every day. It is my source. It is my strength. Let that word feed you. When I call out to the Lord, I call out to the Lord in my times of need based upon his word. Let that word be your protection. Psalms 91 says, blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the seats of the uh, scornful, nor sits in the seats of, uh, of the scoffers. But he delights himself in the law of the Lord. And on that word, he meditates on it day and night. And the one who meditates on that word, he is like a tree whose roots are planted by the streams. And when it's drought... Their leaves don't wither. You want to know why? It's because he's tapped into that word. See, we have to be tapped into that word so that when things come against us, even when everybody else is drying out around you and even when everybody else is fearful around you and even when everybody else seems to have no life and no source and no substance, you're tapped in. Because that's what the word does for us. So we have to make sure of these things. When you are in the word God will satisfy your desires. He says, ask of me. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. When we tap into that word, we know how to ask. And God says, he will satisfy our desires. When we tap into the word, it brings glory to him. Because when you tap into this word, Maybe some of you all understand this. When you let this word get inside of you, this word will make you do things you didn't think you could do. This word will make you think things about yourself that you never thought you could think. This word will make you deny the truth of your fallacies and your faults and let you realize the strength and all of your hope and all of your promise and your strength and your future. See, this word, when it gets inside of you, you don't just think about yourself. And that's why I said, when you allow the words that I speak to abide in you, you're going to ask the right questions. Your desires are going to be different. And when you start asking the things that you desire that come from my word, I'm going to give it to you because God will satisfy our desires and it brings glory to him. 
It brings great glory to him to see us being fruitful and productive. So make sure you do this. Get in the word. Get in the word. But also, let the word get into you. Get in this word. Get in this word. But make sure you let this word get into you. You've heard me say this. You've heard my pastor Brett, Pastor Brett, our, my pastor from Northern Virginia say it. You've been around long enough. You know what he's going to say, and it's just embedded in my heart. Read your Bible when? Every day. Read your Bible every day. The more and more you read your Bible, then the more and more that Bible is going to get into you. The more and more you read that Bible, the more and more you start realizing that Bible is starting to speak to you. You got to read your Bible every single day. Some points I want to give you as it relates to getting in the Word. Read it. Recite it. Remember it. Recall it. And live by it. Read it. Recite it. Say it. Remember it. Bring it back to your memory. Memorize the Scriptures. Recall them. When things are difficult, recall them and bring them into your situation. And you live what the Word tells you to do. You live what the Word tells you to do. When we start living what the Word tells us to do, you are going to see more fruit than you've ever seen in your life before. When you start living the Word, what it tells you to do in the difficult times, in the good times, when you're blessed, when you're high, and when you're low, when you start living that Word because you've read it, you've recalled it, you've recited it, and you remembered it, when you start living that Word, that Word begins to change you, and you begin to bear fruit. Then you have to abide in his love. Abide in his love. Do it because he first loved you. Verse 9, Jesus says this, as the Father, as God has loved me, I also have loved you. So abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love just as I have kept my Father's commandment and I abide in his love. These things that I have spoken to you, I spoke them that my joy would remain in you and that your joy would be full. Here's my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. When you do it because he loves you, You want to know when you're bearing fruit? It's by keeping his commandments. So you know you love God and God knows you love him. It's not just that you say you love him, but you do what he tells you to do. You keep his commandments. He said, you'll keep my commandments if you love me. The other thing you have to do is you have to love one another. And you just don't love one another the way that you think is the best way to love them. You love one another as Christ has loved you. And one of the best examples for us to understand about that in verse 14 is that he laid down his life. See, if we truly love God, that means we're going to obey him. If we truly love God, that means we're going to love others just like Christ loved us. And if we truly love God, that means we're going to lay it down. Everybody say lay it down. See, we have to lay down our life for somebody. We have to give our best, not just for ourselves. We have to give our best for someone else. Because when you love God like that, it means that you're going to obey what he tells you to do. I know a lot of people who love God. God, but just don't love them enough to do what he tells them to do. We just don't love them enough. We just don't love them. Not like that. We love them, but we don't love them like that. We love them like a good friend. We love them like a close confidant, but we don't love them enough to lay down our life. Because if we lay down our life, you will practice it by doing what he tells you to do. Before you can ever get to laying down your life, you need to make sure you lay down some of the things in your life. Because he told you to. See, when we love him like that, it's easy to be able to evaluate the things we need to let go. It's easy to be able to evaluate the things that we need to make sure that we need to keep that commandment. See, when we love him like that, it's easy to begin to change our attitude and our perspective. No, it's not easy. It's hard, but we know we can do it. It's never easy to keep his commandments, especially when his commandments are in violation of your flesh. But we have to. We have to keep his commandments. 
And when we keep his commandments, it makes us love. In this time in which we're social distancing, in the time in which we're quarantined, I had to tell some folks on the phone the other day, I've spent so much time making sure that we can have a quality service. I spent a lot of time making sure that we had the technology so that you could sit in your home and you could make sure that you enjoy service. I've spent so much time making sure that you feel so good. But if I read what God says, now is our time. Say, it's our time. It's our time to show the people in the Phoenix metropolitan area that Valley Gate Church loves them. It's time for us to lay down our lives to somebody else. It's time for us to make sure that the needs of our community are being met by the church because we say we love him. See, if we remain in that love, we don't just think of ourselves, we think of someone else. And we as a church are going to lay it down. I'm looking for an opportunity right now within the next month or so for us to take an offering so that we can use all of the resources so that we can show our community and show the people who are in dire need that we love them. And the only reason why we love them like that is because Jesus loved us like that. See, when you love him, you remember what he did for you. When you love him, you remember when he took care of you. When you love him, there's a constant reminder of his grace that has been more than sufficient for you. And then when we understand what he did all of those things, then we are supposed to be the picture and the example of that for somebody else. Do it because he first loved you. When we abide in his love, we love his commandments, we love one another, and we lay it down. When we abide in his commands, when we abide in his love, we love his commandments, we love one another, and we lay it down. How do I sum all of this up? I actually want to go back and I want to read the last few verses of this. Jesus sums it up much better than I can, and then I'll just make sure that I share with you what was on my heart. Let's go back. To verse 15. We'll start at 14. He says this, you are my friends if you do what I com- whatever I command you. He didn't say if you do some of the things I command you. He said you are my friends if you do whatever I command you. No longer do I call you a servant, for a servant does not know what his master's doing. But I've called you friend for all of the things that I've heard from my father, I've made known to you. Verse 16, he says this, but you didn't choose me. I chose you and I appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. These things I command you, that you love one another. See, when he sums this thing up, he makes it very clear. You've been chosen. You've been chosen to bear fruit. And when you choose to bear fruit, you walk in obedience. You lay down your life. You give something because something has been given to you. And he tells us, this type of fruit, it's good fruit, but it's, it's fruit that will remain. When I go down and I think about this, her wrote my summary as simply as this, bear as much fruit as you can by abiding in the vine and his word and his love. Bear as much fruit as you can by abiding in the vine and in his word and his love. I've just had this thing in my heart as as, as we close. I've just had this thing in my heart that if we abide in him and he abides in us, we'll ask whatever we desire and it should be given to us which means that God he hears us and when we ask him because we've been in his word that means that he spoke his word inside of us first and when God puts his word inside of us then there's something that he does he responds God just doesn't respond to our desires he responds to his word and so there's this song I'm I'm gonna ask 
the, the team back there to turn it up a little bit for me. And I want you to hear this if you can. I don't know if you can. But it says, if you said it, we believe it. If you said it, we believe it. And everything that God speaks is for us to apprehend. And we have to believe it. We have to believe that he is the true vine. And that he gives us strength. He gives us encouragement. He gives us everything that we need to bear fruit. He won't back down from his word because he's the true vine. He won't leave you hanging because he's the true vine. We have to tap in right now. We have to tap in. We have to tap in. When we tap in, he's faithful. He'll walk with us. He'll abide with us. He'll be with us because we've tapped into him. The song says, and you won't start failing with me. He's never failed us. He's never left us. He's never forsaken us. And the question today is, do you believe it? Do you believe it? Do you believe it? Because if you believe it, you have to say it. Because he said it. just that same old fruit but new fruit he said it over your life he said it to you let that word get inside of you Hallelujah. there are people here God wants you to tap in because he's a man of his word he said, if you tap into me, if you abide in me, and my word abides in you, ask whatever you want, and it will be given to you. But he also makes this promise. If you don't, can't bear any fruit. As a matter of fact, you can do nothing. The best that we are when we're not tapped in is we're like that branch that is broken off, withers all by itself can be only used to be burned in the fire but we have to tap in we have to do you believe it do you believe it I want to pray I want to pray for specifically those people it's time for you to tap back in Time for you to re-engage. He says, remain in me, abide in me, and I in you. If you tap in, you're going to experience him in a special way. 
I'm not talking about people who don't have a relationship with Christ. But I'm talking to you. I'm talking to that one. You know you have a relationship with him. But for some reason, you haven't seen the fruit. You don't see the fruit. And it's caused you to tap out in certain areas. But Jesus says, if you abide in me, and I in you, you'll bear much fruit. If that's you, I'm praying for you right now. Wherever you're at, just close your eyes. Put your head down. Stop whatever you're doing. And I want to pray for you. Father, I pray that you would help my brother and sister right now. Give them the strength to tap back in. Tap back in. Tap back in. And as they do, God, I pray that you begin to strengthen them and encourage them and give them hope. Some of you all, the circumstances surrounding this COVID-19 has caused you to tap out. You've tapped in more to the COVID than you've tapped into him. But he says, tap into me. It's time for you to bear fruit. And then there are those who you've never tapped into him. Even when I talk about remaining in him and abiding in him, you really don't understand what that means. Strong possibility that maybe you've never just surrendered your life. The Bible says that when we surrender our lives to Christ, he engrafts us into the tree. It means that he literally, he puts you into the family. And I believe there's some people here today that you want to be in the family. You want to walk with Christ. You want to have a relationship with him. If that's you, you're going to see in our chat, there's a raise your hand button. And you're declaring that today, God, I choose and I desire to have relationship with you. When that hand comes up, I want you to push it. But don't just stop there. As soon as you push it, make sure that you click connect with us. And as you connect with us, we're going to have a team in the private chat who can make sure that they can connect with you and give you everything that you need to begin to help you walk out this relationship with Jesus. And for you all, I want to pray for you. If that's you, if you have not already, make sure you click the raise your hand button. And I want to pray. Repeat after me. Dear God, I want to tap into you because I've never been tapped into you. I pray that you would come into my life and I choose to turn away from everything that has kept me from you. This is my declaration. This is my prayer. And this is my request. I repent of my sin and I choose to follow you. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody say, Amen.